Turn with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Stand with me, if you would, as we read the first nine verses, chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to, to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will expand from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land, swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you you go. Father, thank you for the reading, the hearing of your holy word. We pray today that as we look into the nation of Israel, as they went through this time of transition, that we will make that smooth transition as well, as we are ready to receive a new leader to lead us into the future. And Lord, we pray for Pastor Howe, for his family as they travel to us this week. We pray for their safety. We pray that uh, next week will be a very special week in the life of our church as we're standing on, on the brink of uh, just doing amazing things as God leads us to do them. But Lord, take this passage, use it today to prepare our hearts for what you have in store for us to do throughout this community and beyond. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, the form of the Hebrew word, you see, the title of the message is simply, therefore. And the form of the Greek and the Hebrew word meaning therefore is used in Scripture 3,767 times. That's a lot, isn't it? Now, so that you don't think I wasted all last week sitting in my office counting all of those therefores in Scripture... Uh, you can find amazing things on the internet, Amen. right? <laughs> and, uh, so don't take that, just take that with a grain of salt. I didn't count them. I'm just using someone else's count. 3,700 plus times the word therefore is used in Scripture. So it must be an important word. And Paul used it considerably in his writings, and when he used it, the people knew that the message he was getting ready to tell them reflected the message he had just told them. So you had to determine what was just said so that you can understand what he's getting ready to tell you. And that, that's what's happening here with the Israelites. Therefore, since this has happened, this is going to happen. Or here's the conclusion of, of what I've just taught you, therefore, what I've just taught you, here's what you're supposed to do with it. That's kind of the, the real meaning of therefore. Well, therefore, the conclusion today has not been written, but we know what's happened up to this point. And I want to use the example of Moses and the people of Israel uh, to get the point across, hopefully, today. Moses led the people of Israel from bondage to the Egyptians, 
and them from bondage to themselves for their sin and their disobedience and having to wander in the desert for uh, 40 years. And it was, as God declared, a land flowing with milk and honey. It was everything that God promised that it would be. But as they looked across, they still realized that there was a lot of work that needed to be done because there were still some giants there that they were going to have to face. And in any situation of transition, there are always giants that you're going to have to face. As you look across and as you look out and as you have the vision of what God wants this church to do in the future, the first thing that you're going to see are giants. There are giants out there. And we're going to have to overcome the giants just as the people of Israel overcame the giants as they crossed into the promised land. Now God revealed to Moses that a new leader was coming. And though sadness prevailed among the people concerning this decision, there was an atmosphere of excitement. Uh, There was great expectation of what the new leader was going to do. But it was a time of another transition. And we as a church face that same thing once again. It's going to be a time of transition. And it's coming to us as a new leader is coming to lead the church into the future. And we as the people of Israel anticipate great things to happen. We're excited about that taking place. And this church over the years has changed. And in the church changing, the community has changed for the better. But there's still much work to be done concerning the reaching of the loss for Jesus Christ and That's our job. That's our responsibility. That's what God has given us to do. That is our task. I've seen great works accomplished here and also uh, some areas that need some work. And we're continuing as a church to strive to be that New Testament church in Acts chapter 2. That's the ideal church and we're striving to be that type of church. But in both situations, as you look at the nation of Israel, and as you look at Ramoth Baptist Church, there's one thing that's very clear. After this transition period, there's a lot of work still yet to do. Our work is not over because a new pastor is coming. Your work is just beginning, and it's just starting. And we need to encourage one another to be excited about what's going on. And you must pray diligently as Pastor Howe comes. We will probably have to put some personal preferences aside and just follow what the Lord wants us to do, not what we want to do. Right? As in every situation of losing a pastor, and there goes the bag, that, that wasn't planned. Uh, you, you have mixed reactions. Uh, some are sad, some are angry, some are confused, some are deeply hurt. But let me share with you this morning one thing regardless of where you are this morning in this transition period. In Deuteronomy 34, 8, it says the Israelites grieve for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. A time of grieving. And then it goes on to say the time of weeping and mourning was over. It was over. There was a time of sadness in the lives of the people of Israel as they lost their leader, Moses. But yet there was a clear vision of the Israelites as to what God had intended to happen next. And this new leader was coming to move them into the promised land. And regardless of the circumstances of of any vacancy such as that, we've got to trust God. And after a proper time of mourning and crying for that circumstance, we must continue to work, do the work that God has given us to do. You see, you can't live in the past and expect to prosper in the future. Can't do it. You can't do it. What's in the past has happened. It can't be changed. But it must be dealt with in your heart so that you can move forward in God doing what God wants you to do next. You see, it's a new day. It's not yesterday. Yesterday's is past. It's gone. It's not coming back. But it's today and tomorrow that we need to be concerned about and, and looking ahead to. 
In Joshua 1.1, God brings forth a new leader, and he's done so here. And he's given specific instructions as to the work that needed to be done. Look at the promises in verse 5 and 6 again. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, what God's saying here is that the man he's chosen to lead this church will have his support and guidance and strength and power. He will serve under God's direction. He will serve walking in obedience to God's word. He will need your prayers every day, every single day. And the only hindrance to his work may be that we may not be willing to follow. But you see, we're seeking God's will, not our will. God's will is far superior to anything we could imagine. Church, don't allow that to happen. Don't seek your will instead of God's will. We've got to continually seek God's will. And if you do, you'll, if you follow your own way, you're going to have a dismal future. You're just going to be wandering around in the desert. And all these people around wondering what you're doing. But if you're following God's will, then you're going to be blessed. God's promising here to the people of Israel that, that he'll provide the leadership and the direction. And he'll give strength and courage to the new leader as he stands under the truth of God's word. God will calm the fears of the leader and the people as they face the new challenges. And God may just shake this church and do things that you've never thought of before. Be prepared. Don't be surprised at what God does. You know, we ask God for things and God responds and then we stand in amazement. Wow. And Jesus even says, why do you stand in amazement? That's what you ask for, right? Now, sometimes we have to be pretty specific of what we ask for. I've asked for a yellow Corvette. I've got, I've got tons of them, but they're only about that big, right? Yeah. So it's no telling what God is going to do in, in this church and in the ministries of this church as this new leader comes. Now, God's final promise here, and this is huge, is that, that he's going to be with his servant. And I urge you, I plead with you, I beg you to pray for Pastor Hal and his family in the days to come as he faces the challenge of yet another transition. And you prayed diligently in this past year for next week to come when the new pastor comes on the field. But your prayers really ought to be just starting. Because the work is just starting. We're getting ready to cross over into the promised land, so to speak, that God has given to us in, in this community. Pray for his leadership. Pray for the other staff. Pray for all of our ministries. Pray for a new vision and urgency to reach the community and beyond for Christ. Pray for the deacon body as they uh, support the church and the staff. Pray for the church as a body of believers sold out to following Christ. Pray for those who need to be a part of this fellowship. But uh, they need to be on the playing field. Not just sitting in the pew. You need to be on the playing field. Amen. Be a part of the game. And to help you in the transition... As, as an individual and as a church, God gives both direction and warning. Joshua 1.8 Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful you see, God's issuing this warning to us this morning. Don't depart from this book. Don't depart from it. Because when you depart from the teachings of this book, you're on the wrong track, right? You might be on track, but you're on the wrong track. And you're going in the wrong direction. Be fearful of the world's gospel, which is no gospel at all. 
And he tells us to stand strong and be courageous, be very courageous in sharing and teaching God's Word because if we don't stand for something, we're going to fall for anything that comes along. Don't depart from this book. Now the transitional pastor, that's me, generally comes in uh, in an unexpected departure. In case y'all didn't know that, that's me. Uh, or after a lengthy ministry or retirement of some sort. And uh, his, his job is to prepare the church for a new leader to come into the future. That, that's the job. And I know that I probably haven't done some things that maybe you thought I should have done. But I proclaim to you today that I always did what I thought God was leading me to do, regardless of the impending consequences that might follow. Yeah. And I've told you several times over the past year that I'd much rather have you mad at me than God mad at me. Right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. This church is an example of what church should be like. And you should be proud of that. You should be excited about that. You should have no fear in inviting people to come and be a part of this fellowship. Because they're welcomed when they come in. You feel at home when you get here. And you've realized that as you face these unexpected difficulties that that God was still in control he was still with you and he was still working in and through you and you placed and you continue to place your trust in God not in man right that's the key and the church today definitely stands upon the truth of God's word and proclaims it in every ministry we do Everything is grounded in God's Word. And the gospel is shared in every ministry that we do. And I believe this church is stronger today than ever before because you have stood in the face of adversity and you've continued to serve the Lord. You haven't given up. You haven't let down. And in any situation, and this certainly applies to the future, be cautious of any criticism that you might give because you probably don't know the entirety of the story. Right? And the senior pastor, or any pastor for that matter, always finds himself in a very critical situation as he deals with matters of, of his congregation, as he deals with personal issues. And many times the decisions that he makes is to protect the integrity of the entire church. But yet not everyone knows everything that's going on. And if you do anything for your new leader, for Pastor Howe, pray diligently for him. Lift him up daily. Lift him up every single day. And you may not know what he needs prayer for, but I can guarantee you that as a senior pastor, he's going to have issues every single day that he needs his people praying for him, right? No one really knows the pressure and trials and tribulations of a senior pastor unless you've been one. I've always said this would be a great job if you didn't have to deal with the people. (laughs) Amen. Amen, huh? I thought that that ought to get an amen, right? Yeah. You see, at at best, ministry is is extremely difficult, and and the pastors need your prayers all the time, amen. and he needs understanding of things that aren't always crystal clear to us. Now Moses enjoyed his ministry with the people of Israel, even though they they criticized him at every turn. Uh, he made decisions they didn't like, and Had he not been called of God, he would not have been able to lead the people. He was called by God. And as Moses and the people of Israel, uh, as they were not perfect, and, and we're not perfect. And the Apostle Paul says, of all sinners, I am the chief of sinners. And I've wondered all the time, if Paul's the chief, man, I'm in bad shape. You know, I'm in a world of trouble. Well, during this time, I, I've been as honest with you as I know how. 
I have attempted without apology or excuse to proclaim the gospel message of Christ as simply as possible and whether you liked it or not. Right? And the one greatest compliment I guess you've given me is to say that I'm a simple preacher. And I'm simple enough to understand that you can understand what I'm saying. And one of the greatest uh, compliments that uh, anyone I think will ever receive that I've, I've received is when the small children say, I, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. If I can get a small child to understand what I'm talking about, surely the adults can understand, Amen. right? And I trust that the ministries and the witness of this church will continue in this community and beyond this community through this church family proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, it's really a simple message. There's no need to cloud it all up. It's a simple message. Jesus loves you, right? What a testimony. Jesus loves you. I don't care who you are, what you look like, how you're dressed, where you work, how you live. Jesus loves you, right? Right? Now, one thing you must know, and most of you do know, it's not the pastor that makes the church, right? It's the people who are truly in love with Christ and are, who are committed to serving him. That's what makes the church, right? That's what makes it. That's what makes it strong. That's what makes it vibrant. That's what makes it exciting, uh, It's exciting just to come in and, and see all the people in the Welcome Center out there just gathered around hugging each other and laughing and shaking hands and, and so forth. It's exciting to see that. You don't see that in every church. You go in some churches, you might get, uh, uh, you just get a grunt, you know. If you'd hug them, they'd probably fall out in the floor. Right? Yeah. The church is made up of those who are witness for, witnesses for Christ. And that's the church that, that lost people are looking for. They're not looking for a church that's only concerned about themselves. They're not looking for a church that, that can't get along with each other. But they're looking for a church that truly loves each other and loves the Lord. And they can tell if you love each other. And they can tell if you love the Lord just as soon as they walk in those doors. They can tell it. I've had people tell me that. When I walked in here, it, it was just a relief because I felt the very presence of God's Holy Spirit dwelling within the people here. Not just in the building, but He was dwelling within the lives of the people. And that's exciting. That's exciting. That's the type of church that I've seen here as you shared that love with Terry and me when we first walked in the door. Now, why wouldn't anybody want to be a part of a church like that? Why wouldn't they? Now, visitors and attenders, uh, I'm not trying to run you off. Don't be misled here. But if you're waiting for the new pastor to come to see if you like him or not before you join the church, you're joining it for the wrong reason. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You see us old pastors come and go. And we get put out to pasture and somebody drags us back out and said, Oh, old boy's got one more rodeo in him. <laughs> so so we'll, we'll drag him out and use him one more time. <laughs> then, then they, then they get, get through and they put him back in the pasture. Pastors come and go. But you are the church. You're the church. You're what people see every day. They don't see the pastor every day, but they see you all over this community every single day. And you are a bold, courageous witness for Ramoth Baptist Church. Amen. Well, a lot of things have been accomplished here in this past year. Things are moving forward in many areas. People are still being saved. New members, visitors are still coming. At least they were before today. <laughs> but I'm not going to go into to any of that, but to say that God gets the glory for everything that's been accomplished here. 
And you'll notice in Deuteronomy 34, verse 4, that God spoke to Moses. Moses didn't resist the call or the will of God in this transition. And the next verse, very simply put, says, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. And as I was working on the message this week, I, I thought, man, this would be a good time to, to really, a uh, good idea to do. And I thought as I read that verse that Moses just died, that I'd just fall out on the floor. Then I thought, well, that might be a little too dramatic. <laughs> so if that uh, were to happen, uh, I'm not faking it. So call 911, okay? <laughs> just, just call 911 if that happens. But there's one coming to lead you into the future. And in due time, you'll love him just as much or more as you've loved any of the other pastors that have come before him. And that's the way it ought to be. Amen. That's the way it ought to be. This is my prayer, and here's my request to you. Don't judge, don't compare Pastor Howe to any other pastor, but allow him to be as God leads him to be. Amen. Right? Amen. Right? And don't forget your calling. Just because you, you've got a new pastor coming, you can't sit back now and say, well, we, we'll let him do all this for a while and see what he's made of. No. You've got to continue to reach out to this community. Because if you don't tell them, who will? Right? Well, may God continue to bless you as you serve him. And I know that he will. There is there one final question I want to ask you this morning. It's a very important question. I don't want anybody to miss it. Everybody awake? Make sure everybody around you is awake and alert. And as the teacher says, sitting straight up in the chair. Are you ready? Here it is. Are you ready for Christmas? <laughs> Father, thank you. For Joshua this morning, the experience of Joshua as you have led him to be the new leader in that day of the people of Israel. A big challenge to fill the shoes of, of Moses. But Lord, there was a time of mourning, there was a time of weeping, and that was put in the past, and they were looking to the future. And that's what we as, as a church, that's what this church needs to do. Is to not look in the past, but look to the future. We're not living in yesterday, we're living today. And we're preparing for tomorrow. And Lord, if there are those here without Jesus as their Lord and Savior, what better time to make that profession of faith today. Maybe the power of the Holy Spirit is convicting you right now. That you're lost. You're in need of a Savior. You've been searching and seeking and nothing else has worked. Maybe you're at the, just at, at the bottom level at the moment. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart wanting to come in. But you're going to have to open the door and admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior and that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for your sins. And you're going to have to invite him in to be your personal Lord and Savior. And if you do that, I would encourage you to boldly come and make that profession of faith this morning. Father, there may be those sitting in, in the church today just, just waiting to see what's going to happen. And maybe that's the way they, they deal with things, and, and that's okay. But it's not the pastor that makes the church. It's the people. So if there are those who need to unite with this body of believers, Lord, I pray that they'll come today. 
that they're looking to the future and looking to place their life and their commitment here. Others may need to come for prayer this morning. The altar's open. But we are so thankful as we sang our, our praise to you this morning, singing songs of thankfulness, we are so thankful of what you have done and are doing and will do in the future of this church family. We're thankful for your blessings in our individual lives. We are thankful that you are our refuge and our strength. And Father, we just, uh, in this invitation time, give you the praise and the glory for whatever you do in this time. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray.